There's a lot of different ways to go about attaching different components and actors to each other, whether it's using placeholder components such as scene components, stack meshes, or even collisions. One that I've talked about before but I haven't actually touched on before is using sockets to attach one component to another or even an actor to another component. So in this video I'll be showing you guys how to use sockets to attach one component to another in Unreal Engine. So let's go and jump right into this. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened up a new project, um, as usual. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be using any sort of VR expansion plugin or anything like that. This is going to be completely based off the default VR um, template. However, this will work with a VR expansion plugin if rather than using a standard actor, you use... Um, well, actually, no, you probably could just use a standard actor, too, if you have that set up to be able to, um, to attach. Um, this will basically work the same, though, it, for the most part. Um, so, um, like I said, I haven't done too much. Um, the only thing I've done so far is set up additional inputs for my specific headset. Um, and yeah, so the way that we're going to go about doing this is we're actually going to take a couple of these BP pickup cubes and we're going to modify them. We're going to give them, we're going to uh, develop it so that way it has a socket on it, and then we, we're also going to make it so that way we can attach them together using a collision. So before you go and do too much, I actually want to jump into this and I want to see the size to make sure it's a pretty decent size, and I think that is. So let me go and drop in two here real quick. So uh, since we already have these here and we're already here in the scene, let's go and drop in a couple here. And just because I know it might drive me crazy, let me see if these are pretty evenly spaced. Let's get them a little closer. Um, quite frankly, spacing isn't a huge deal, but um, I don't know. It's just something that <laughs> that's personally going to drive me crazy. Um, okay, so there is our BP pickup cubes. Um, so far, not too much. Um, so now we're going to go and jump into this. Uh, and first thing I want to focus on is actually creating the sockets for the cube. So you can actually see um, I've clicked on the static mesh component over here, or I have that selected over here. Um, and I actually want to go over here into uh, and hit this little magnifying glass icon and bring up our 1M cube, which you've actually seen I've already done. Um, and this is basically just to view the stack mesh um, of the of this cube. So in order to actually create our socket, there's not too much to it. Uh, you can actually see there's not really any sockets or anything attached right now. Um, right now that just is the origin right there. So you can actually see that uh, it's currently just marking our origin. So I'm actually going to, going to create a socket. Oh, and I did not mean to do that. Let's go ahead and name this. I'm actually going to, no, we'll, we'll leave it uh, label socket. And <clears throat> the goal that I'm aiming here is I want to have them basically just attached to, e to each other. Um, so that way it just basically forms more of like a rectangle rather than a cube like this. So I'm actually gonna move it out 100. Um, and the reason I'm actually doing 100 is uh, in case you didn't see, once I hit the edge, that's 50. And since we're going to be using two cubes to attach them to each other, um, I'm actually just gonna move it out another 50 to make up for the second cube that we're attaching. Um, the location, rotation, and scale shouldn't make too much of a difference in this case. Uh, this is one reason why sockets can be pretty good if you want to use a socket to be able to attach two objects to each other. Uh, is that it's very easy to manipulate and by attaching it this way and automatically saying all locations and rotations to zero, if, if uh, attaching them doesn't look quite right in the way that you want it to, like maybe you have two rocks that are meant to mesh together, uh, this is a great way to come in and just very easily, quickly be able to manipulate it by changing around the rotation, location, all that in order to get that perfect position that you want. Um, and we can actually set up to a uh, second stack mesh. Um, obviously, I'm not going to end up using this, and it isn't something that shows up uh, over here in the scene. This is just meant as a visual, so you can actually see too uh, how it's going to look as well. So let me actually go and just reset that because we don't need that. Um, so that's pretty much all, all it is on the socket side. We have our socket set up. Um, you do want to remember whatever it is you label the socket you want to attach to, since we will need this here in a second. Now going over to here, uh, let's go ahead and create a collision here. I'm going to do a sphere collision. There we go. And I'm actually going to increase the radius. 
Now, something that I am going to be kind of worried about with something like this is because they both have collisions on them. So if we go over to here, um, my worry would be that these both detect each other at the same time and try to attach to each other, causing some sort of weird issue. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to take one of these. Let me actually go and take this one. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to just drop the radius all the way down to zero for that specific one. So that way it's not going to render any kind of collisions or anything. And I can actually go down here as well, actually. This, this is just as an extra precaution. Uh, never mind, it won't let me set no collision. Um, that's fine though. Uh, we don't need, setting it to zero radius should, should still work just fine without an issue. Um, let me actually go and rename this too. I probably should rename this before. I'm gonna rename that to collision. Okay, um, so now I'm gonna go down here and we're going to do, let's see here. We'll do on, where's begin overlap? Here we go, on component begin overlap. Um, because I'm doing this in VR, um, what I'm going to try and do is basically have it so I can drop it down and once they begin that overlap, then they'll automatically connect to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our overlap component and we're going to cast to uh, static mesh components. Actually, no, let's do this. Let's cast it to another BP pickup cube. BP pickup cube. And there we go. And actually, I probably should have checked this too. It is set to overlap all. Okay, I had to be sure of that too. Um, so now going over here, um, I'm casting it into BP pickup cube. Uh, of course, there are lots of other ways to go about doing this. If you want to detect a specific stack mesh, for example, you could grab the component and check to see if it is a stack mesh, if it's a stack mesh you're looking for, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, now going on beyond this, uh, next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to grab the static mesh component from it. So we'll do get static mesh component should be down here at the bottom. There we go. And uh, using this, let's actually go and do attach component to component. We're gonna wanna attach our static mesh component. So the way that this is working is this static mesh component is ourself. So it is our own static mesh that we're going to end up attaching. And uh, quite frankly, we could also just use self. We could also just attach actor to component. That would work just fine as well. I'm actually going to, t but just for simplicity's sake, this is how I'm doing it. Uh, so I'm going to go and take that. And so we have our target right here. This is going to attach to our new stack mesh component. You can see right here, there's a, uh, there's a section called socket name. And if we actually mouse over, you can actually see it's optional. So it will basically attempt to attach to the socket. And so in order to do this, uh, let me see here. We named it socket, just had to be sure. And you do want to make sure that it is spelled uh, correctly, of course. And I'm actually going to set our location and our rotation to snap to target. This will make sure that we automatically send it straight to the point that we want it to be at. Um, and everything else should be pretty good. Actually, I'm going to set this to keep world. A keep relative should work fine as well, but just just to be safe, I'm going to set to keep uh, world. And that should be it. So the way that this will work is I'm going to go and jump into VR here in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this on this cube. And once it, well, once it collides, it should basically attach to the socket, which should probably be right about here, I believe. Uh, I may be wrong. It's on one of these sides. Um, and uh, using that, it should basically make it look like a large cube. So let's go and jump into VR and have a look at how that uh, uh, how this looks. So here you can see we have two cubes here. Um, so this is the one that we're actually going to end up attaching to. And actually, if you want to be sure to, uh, in case you're unaware and, and you want to check, here's a little tip. If you actually hit the tilde key on whatever keyboard you're using, um, you can actually type in show collision and it'll actually show the collision. So we can actually see not only the mesh collision, but we can also see the sphere collision on this one. This one would have one. And actually, if I got really close to the center of that cube and was looking in it, I could probably see just maybe like a dot. Let me see if I can do that real quick, actually. This might be too close to the floor for me. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, uh, no, actually you can't. So because it's set to radius zero, um, that was that was going to be uh, another assumption of mine. Because it sets radius zero, there's actually essentially no collision. So let me go and grab this. 
Okay, and once I drop this, you actually see where the collision is? And you can see it automatically attached me. So I did actually have it on position. I thought it would get attached right here, but the socket's actually over here on this side. If I actually go ahead and grab this again, you can actually see it automatically detached, and that's because um, when we actually grab it, it actually grabs, um, it, it actually takes this mesh and attaches it to the hand uh, instead of. So it's essentially automatically detaching it in that way. And then I can go and drop it again, have that be fine. However, if I grab this one, you actually see they actually combine like that because this one is the, uh, is the root one. And we're actually attaching this. So um, kind of interesting. And I don't know. Oh, that's what I meant to do. I should also be able to as well grab that one and then pull this one off as well. So that's kind of an interesting little thing. It, it's a it's an interesting little uh, tool you can use, um, and yeah, it, it certainly has a lot of use in uh, being able to attach like this. And I thought it would be rather interesting. So there you go. Um, and of course, you can use other things like you don't have to use a collision if you want to use a button or something like that. Collision is just what I figured would be easiest to quickly implement into a VR um, world. So yeah, there you go. Uh, that is how you attach them based off of sockets. And with that, that is a very simple look at how to use sockets to attach two components or even actors to each other using sockets. This is a very simple method of using sockets and it is probably not something you're always going to want to use, but if you need to be able to quickly attach two uh, actors or components and be able to easily adjust the way that they look when they're attached to each other, this is certainly a great method to use in order to do that. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this and you'd like to help support VR Playground, be sure to hit the subscribe or the like button down below. And with that, I will see you in the next reality.